Now you'd be surprised how simple this chicken recipe is. It's got all the flavors and I guarantee when you bite into it, you'll think it tastes simply delish. G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. This is a fantastic dinner recipe to make that I know everyone will love. It is simple to make, but the flavors just pop in your mouth. They are really simple, but delicious. So join me today as I make my version of a creamy chicken, mushrooms and bacon. And don't forget to check out Todd'sKitchen.com for my new range of mugs. Now we're going to start this off with a pot on the stove and I have this pot on a medium heat. Now we want to try and use an oven proof pot because we're going to use this pot in the oven straight after we sear the chicken. So we're going to sear the chicken and this is simply going to help keep the chicken nice and moist. It'll keep a lot of the juices inside, which will prevent that dried chicken taste that you might get. Now you can use skin on, skin off, that's completely up to you. But personally, I prefer skin off because it's just that much healthier. So just on top, I'm just going to sprinkle on just some olive oil. Now it's up to you how much you use, but I'm just going to add about three, two or three cloves of garlic, minced garlic. So just pat that on top. Now you can use as much as you like or as little. And I know a lot of people love using extra garlic. It's just one of those ingredients I feel that you just can't have enough of sometimes. Then I'm going to sprinkle on some parsley just on top of each one. And some salt. And pepper. So we want to make sure this is on top first because we're going to turn it over again in a second to sear this side of the chicken. Now it's not going to completely cover or sear the entire sides of the chicken. We just want to sear both sides. Don't have to worry about the actual side parts like so. Just so it locks in a lot of the juices, but we're not going to lock in all of the juices. But by doing it this way, you have the flavor on the top. And now we're going to turn it upside down. As you can see, that is nicely seared. So we're going to have the flavors on the bottom, so while they're in the oven, the flavors are going to work their way up. Okay, so we have our chicken just searing again now on the other side, and we're going to let that sear away for another three minutes. Okay, so once we've seared the second side, we're going to place this into a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Now it does depend on the thickness of your chicken. Now this particular chicken I'm using is a little bit thicker than normal, so it may take a bit longer. But use an internal temperature because you, this is chicken, you want to be extra safe. We want to aim for an internal temperature of about 75 degrees Celsius or 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So I really recommend a instant type thermometer like this because this is perfect for chicken. So half an hour, 45 minutes, but again, it depends on the size of the chicken. Okay, so I've just taken the chicken out of the oven and just by checking, it has reached 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's still some juices in the bottom of the pan, as you can see from there. We'll leave those in there, but we're just going to transfer the chicken just to a plate for the moment. And of course, we're just going to cover it up with some foil just to keep it warm. Okay, so with that pod, now it's back on a medium heat. So to that I'm going to add in four cloves of crushed up garlic. Now, as I said, you can never have too much garlic. And we're just going to cook this over this medium heat just for a couple of minutes, just to bring out all those lovely garlic flavors. Okay, so once we've fried our garlic, which only takes about a minute just to make it nice and fragrant, we're going to add in 200 grams or seven ounces of diced up bacon. And who doesn't love bacon? But of course, if you happen to be one of those people who don't like bacon, you can choose not to add it. So we're just going to cook this bacon over this medium heat, just for a few more minutes. Okay, so once you cook the bacon for a few minutes, now you can cook it a little bit further to make it crispier. That's completely up to you. So next I'm going to add in 14 ounces or 400 grams worth of sliced up mushrooms. So we're going to cook these for a further few minutes, just until all the mushrooms have softened up nicely.
Okay, so once we've softened up the mushrooms, I'm going to add in half a cup of chicken broth. Well, it's also called stock here in Australia. Then one cup of heavy cream, whipping cream or double cream. Just any type of good thick cream that you can find. Half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And just top it off with some pepper. Now you can add some salt if you choose, but there's no real need to because you'll find the bacon is already salty enough. But if you don't add the bacon, feel free to add a little bit more salt. And we're just going to stir this and cook it over a medium heat just until everything is nicely combined and you'll notice that it starts to thicken up a little bit. Now you, instead of using whipping cream or heavy cream, you can use normal milk, but if you want that thickness aspect to the cream, to the sauce, just add say about a tablespoon of corn flour or corn starch. So that is a just an extra trick to get around not having to use the whipping cream or thicken cream. Use normal milk but add corn starch. But I do highly recommend the cream part instead of normal milk because it just tastes so much better. Okay so as you can see it is just starting to simmer now so we're just going to let that simmer away for two minutes and that'll just help thicken everything up nicely. Doesn't matter whether you use the cornstarch, corn flour or you use the thickened cream it works the same way. Okay so once our sauce is thickened up we're just going to add our chicken back to the pot and this will do up to six slices of chicken, six chicken breasts. And I've got another three that I've already pre-cooked as well, but just for the video, I was able to only sear three at a time. So I don't think we're making a lot of sauce for a little bit of chicken because I've actually got another three ready to go into this pot afterwards. So we're just going to let that simmer away for another two to three minutes just to give it a chance for that chicken to soak up all those lovely flavors. And once it's soaked up all those flavors, it's ready. Okay, so once everything's nicely cooked, what you have to do is just, now you can serve this with rice or vegetables, completely up to you. Or you can have it by itself. So I'm just going to add some of that lovely sauce just over the top. And just top it off with a little more parmesan. Because just like bacon, you can never have enough cheese. And there we have our delicious, mouth-watery, creamy chicken with bacon and parmesan and mushrooms. It really does tick all the boxes for so many flavors. As I said, you can serve it on a bowl of rice or with vegetables, but honestly, it's a meal in itself. It's a restaurant quality dinner at a fraction of the price, and it's really so simple to make. But whether you have it by itself or with a side of vegetables or rice, either way, it's going to taste simply delish. Okay, we're going to start this off with a saucepan over the stove on a medium heat. So into the saucepan, I'm going to place in one cup of brown sugar, followed by a teaspoon of salt, a third a cup of your favorite beer, and I'll leave it up to you what type of beer you want to use. And I've got four slices of bacon that I've just roughly chopped up. And I'm just going to give it a quick season just with a little bit of pepper. Okay, so as you can see, it has now been brought up to a boil. So now we're going to cook this for a further 10 minutes. That'll help reduce a lot of the liquid, cook out the alcohol. But more importantly, it's going to enhance and combine all those lovely flavors. So it's all nice and infused. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. And what you're left with now is a thick syrupy mixture. So, and it smells delicious. You can smell the bacon and you can smell the beer. And the sugar acts like a nice glaze. So lastly, I have about three and a half cups of pecan nuts. So just put that straight into the pot and give it a good mix until everything is nicely coated. And lastly, I've just got an oven tray here and I've just lined it with some foil. So we're just going to place our pecan nuts onto our tray. Just even them out, just like so. Now once all nicely evened out, we're going to place this into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 minutes. And would you look at those delicious beer and bacon pecan nuts. So once I cool down the tray, all I had to do was simply break them up and place them into a bowl. And I really love the texture of these because they're nice and crispy on the outside because they've been glazed with that sugar. 
but they're also nice and soft in the middle. And you'll have all those bacon pieces mixed throughout, mixed with that lovely taste of beer. Trust me, these will be a party favourite that'll go fast because they taste simply delish. Now to start off with, on a fry pan, just lightly grease it with some oven spray, cooking spray. Then we're going to put the bacon on and we're just going to cook this just for a couple minutes on each side. Now while the bacon's cooking, I've got some, some round rolls here. Now you want, preferably ones that have got the hard outer shell. So just grab your knife and we're just going to just cut the top off like so. Just so you've got the top off like that. So you leave about that much air. And what we're going to do is just grab all the mixture from all the bread from inside the roll. Just like so. So what you get is a nice hollow roll. Okay, so once done, make sure you save these tops because we're still going to use these. So let's put those aside for now. now. I've got a can of spaghetti here, so I'm going to put this into a microwave safe dish, just like that. Just spread that out a bit. I've got some baby tomatoes here, so we're just going to cut these in half. Just like that. Okay, once they cut it in half, we're going to place it into the bowl with the spaghetti. And we're going to stick this in the microwave for about two minutes to warm up. Yeah, just taking the bacon off. Now we're going to just grab a piece of bacon and we're going to line the base of these rolls. Just do it until you've got complete coverage all the way all the way around the inside. Next we're gonna spoon some of this mixture in, try and just get what you need. So you get some of the spaghetti, some of the tomato, and just fill the gap in just like that. Okay now we're just gonna get an egg. And we're just going to crack it right on top, so should be just enough room there, just so it sits just inside, just like that. There we go. Okay, with your griller on high, um, when I say griller, in America it's called a boiler. So, when it, once on high, I'm just going to place both the rolls just in like, just like that. And we're going to put those in there and we're going to let those cook initially for two minutes and then we're going to put in the tops. Okay, while the rolls are in the griller, we're just going to grab a grab some shredded cheese of your choice and we're just going to put these on top of the roll, the roll tops. Just like so. Okay, these have been baking for a couple of minutes now. As you can see, the eggs are starting to cook away. Now this one's just slightly burnt on the top. That's just because it's a higher, it's a higher roll. That's how we do it, just cut a little bit off the top. So now we're just going to put the tops of the rolls in there with the cheese and we're going to put these on for a further two minutes. Once the cheese is nicely melted as you like, then they're ready. Okay, so I've just pulled this out of the griller, now I'm just going to give it a light season with some salt and some pepper. They can have it as is, but I like to use the top here with the cheese, you can use it as a bit of a scoop. Let's grab some of that up. Let's give this a taste. Mm. Oh, that tastes outstanding. Oh, yeah. Okay, all the ingredients are listed below. Thank you for watching this episode of Todd's Kitchen. Please show me some love by giving me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time for another delicious recipe. Okay, to start off with, I've got a pot here on the stove on high. Now, we're going to put in six rashers of bacon that I've just finely chopped up. And about 100 grams of unsalted butter. Now, we're going to stir this for a good 10 minutes until all the bacon is blackened up or just till it's starting to stick on the bottom of the pot. 
So the reason why we're gonna cook why we're cooking this until it goes close to black is because bacon is naturally very salty. So when you when you overcook the bacon, when you make it when you when it starts to get close to burning and with the added butter, what that's gonna do is it's gonna transform it to a more of a sweeter taste. So most of that salt taste will go and it'll just it'll just be a, a much nicer, sweeter taste, which would be perfect for this ice cream. Okay, so as you can see, the bacon is well cooked. We'll take it off there. We don't want to overcook it, obviously. We don't want the black charcoal. Now, because it's really attached itself to the bottom of this pot, I've got another pot here that I've preheated on another element to medium. Uh, turn the temperature down the medium, by the way, and just transfer that straight in to a fresh pot. Now, to that, we're going to add in one and a quarter liters of milk. Make sure this is full cream milk, I can't stress that enough. And to that we're going to add 350 grams of caster sugar. Then to that we're going to add the seeds of one vanilla bean. Then just chuck in the rest of the vanilla beans as well. But make sure you de-seed them first. Those vanilla beans, are, they're very intense flavour and they will, <laughs> trust me, it'll make a hell of a difference. Okay, so we're going to bring this to a simmer and we're going to let it simmer, stirring occasionally just for, for about a good 10 minutes and that'll really infuse all that bacon, vanilla and sugar taste right into the milk. Okay, now in a bowl I've got 12 egg yolks, now I want you to give it a very, very good whisk just so it's completely broken up. Okay, I've had this on a low simmer for 10 minutes now. Now grab in your yolk mix, just pour it in as you're stirring it around. Just do it slowly. If you put it, all, put it, um, pour it all in once, um, if it touches the bottom it'll start to form like an egg yolk, you don't really want that. So just pour it in slowly as you stir the pot. Okay, in the sink I've got some cold water which I've also filled with ice and I've got the bowl here with a sieve on top. So what we're going to do now is just very carefully sieve the mixture into the bowl. Okay, once it's all sieved through, we're going to let this sit here for about, about half, give it, give it a good half an hour just to cool down completely. Now that the mixture is cooled down, we're going to whip up 600 ml of thickened cream and we're going to whip this up until soft peaks start to form. Okay, this is what I mean by soft peaks. When you raise it up, you actually, it actually forms a peak for where the mixer was. So that's exactly how you want it. Okay, now with your cream mixture, I just want you to Place it into the bowl there with your bacon mixture and we're just going to fold it through just till it's nicely combined. Now this technique is called parfait, uh, basically it saves you from using an expensive ice cream churner and it makes the ice cream, it helps the ice cream come out nice and fluffy. Now it's just a matter of pouring it into a dish just like so. Now I'm using a bread dish here and which works out good because as you can see it's pretty much exactly the right size. Okay once done we're going to place this into the freezer for yeah preferably overnight but let's say about four or five hours it should do it perfect. Okay so I had this in the freezer for a few hours now. Now it's until you touch it it's pretty hard it's looking fantastic. Now I really want to give this a try. Here we go. Mm. That's not too bad. There's a you can taste the hint of bacon, eggs, and that cream. Oh, that's that's actually pretty damn good. Now, trust me, don't knock it unless you try it. It's actually not too bad. It's got a very distinct taste, but it's no, it's good. Thanks for watching this episode of Todd's Kitchen. Please show me the love by giving me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe. And I'll see you next time for another delicious recipe. Okay, so we're going to start this recipe off by making our candy glaze. So into a bowl, I'm going to place in half a cup of brown sugar. 
and to that a quarter cup of your favorite beer. And using a whisk, I'm just going to continuously whisk this until it's until the sugar is completely dissolved and it, the mixture starts to thicken up. Okay, so next I've got a baking tray and I've lined the base with some aluminium foil and I have a cooling rack on top. So it's very important we use the cooling rack because we want the air to circulate around the bacon. So next we're just going to lay our bacon across the rack. And we're going to place this into a preheated oven at 220 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Okay, so I've just taken our bacon out of the oven and we're going to grab our glaze and a brush and we're going to just coat each piece of bacon just like this. Okay, once they're coated, we're going to turn each piece over and carefully glaze the other side. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this about two to three more times. Basically, it's up to you how much you want to do it. We're just going to do it till the bacon is at your liking, which you want it close to burnt, but not too burnt, because you really want that crunchy bacon taste and look and feel. Okay, so we're going to place this back in the oven for another 10 minutes. Okay, so I've just taken our bacon out of the oven and I've glazed it another two times, which means another 20 minutes. So the bacon's been in the oven for a total of 40 minutes. And look at that. It looks delicious. And I can smell it too, and it smells fantastic too. So all we have to do now is we're going to let this sit here on the rack to cool down for about one hour. And in one hour, it's going to be nice and crispy. Now would you look at that. Now isn't that just a sight of beauty? So just when you think you can't improve on the taste of bacon, someone like me comes along and adds a bit of beer and sugar and does just that. And I know what you're thinking, <laughs> what's it taste like? Well, let's give some a try. Oh my, that is so good. You have the lovely, lovely bacon taste combined with that sweet, sweet beer taste. And you put those flavors together and I have no problem saying this tastes simply delish. Okay, so to start this off into a bowl, we're going to pour in our barbecue sauce. Now you can use any type of sauce or marinade that you like. I'm using a smoky barbecue flavored. Okay, now to that, I'm going to add in our apple cider vinegar. Then our bourbon. You can use any type of bourbon, just use your favorite. And we're just going to whisk that through until it's well combined. Okay, so next I've got some bacon. Now what I've done is I've taken most of the fat off, but I've left some of it on the bacon itself. And I've just placed it into a mini food processor. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to process this until we get up to a, it's like a paste consistency. Okay, so now that it's more like a paste, that's that we're going to add in about a teaspoon of salt. And half a teaspoon of black pepper. And one and a half teaspoons of brown sugar. And half a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Then one eighth of a cup of sweet paprika. And then we're going to pulse this again until it's well combined. Okay, so next I have our chicken breast here. Now what I've done is I've just cut it up into bite-sized pieces as so. And I've also patted it down with some paper towel just to get rid of that extra moisture. So onto the chicken we're going to put on our dried paprika mix and just simply using our hands we're going to rub it all the way through just till all the chicken is coated. Okay so next I have some wooden skewers and now I've had these soaking in water for about half an hour it just helps prevent them from burning when they're on the barbecue. So grabbing a piece of chicken one at a time we're just going to work it onto our skewer. just until we have one nice kebab. Now we're just gonna continue on until they're all done. Okay, so I've got the barbecue here on high, so all we have to do is just place our kebabs onto our barbecue. And now we're gonna cook them on the first side for about, say, two to three minutes, and then we're gonna flip them over. Okay, so it's been about three minutes now, so I'm just going to flip them over to the other side. And we're going to put on our first glaze of our bourbon sauce. And we're just going to let this continue cooking on this other side for another two to three minutes. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes now, so again, I'm just going to turn them over. 
And we're going to cook it on the other side for another one minute, just to cook in that sauce, that bourbon sauce. And while it's on the other side, we're just going to sauce up the second side. Okay, so we're just going to turn it over once more and just cook it for one more minute on the side that we just glazed. Just to cook in those flavors. Okay, so now they're ready to take off the barbecue. Now optionally, you can just put on a little bit more glaze just for that extra flavor. And they're ready to serve. So they do take a bit of preparation, but in the end, they're worth it. Let's give one a try. Oh, now that is absolutely delicious. The chicken is cooked just right. And with the infusion of two different types of paprika flavors and the smoky barbecue, and you can taste that bourbon. Now I must stress, you don't have to worry about kids having this recipe because the alcohol will burn off on the barbecue. So there'll be zero alcohol, but 100% taste. But the best thing about these bourbon barbecue kebabs is, that they taste simply delish. Okay, so we're gonna start this off and we're gonna start it off with the obvious and that is our lovely strips of bacon. Now we wanna get the general size first, so lay some horizontal, then vertical. And what we're going to do is we're going to weave these pieces of bacon in and out of themselves and that'll help them stick together. So with the weaving, we're just going to do a simple under and over method. And try and keep it as close and as tight as you can make it. Just so it'll help it all stick together nicely. And just continue on until you've finished up the whole row. Okay, next, so we can get more of a taco shape. I've got a plate here. I'm just gonna place it on upside down. And we're just going to cut a circle, cut off all the excess bacon, just on the outside of the plate. And we're now left with a nice round circle. Okay, so next we need to use a mold. Now I've toyed with a few ideas, and I've yet to see this particular method used anywhere on the internet. So because of that, I will call this Todd's Bacon Mold 5000. And it's very simple. I'm going to use a normal foil pie base. And we just wanna flip it like that. And we're just going to mold it. So we have obviously the a flat part there because you want your bacon mold to be down flat like so. So a flat part there. And just make some small legs on the bottom. Just like that. So once you've got your mold sitting right, you want it so the bacon's going to be sitting over and it's going to look like a taco shell. But I'm going to have it so it's a flat base. That way your taco is going to be sitting up like so. So welcome to the Todd Taco Mold 5000. So obviously I've got this on a baking tray because you want something that's going to catch the oil because there will be oil coming down from the bacon while it's cooking. So I've got our bacon here and we're going to put the mold up like so. And we're just going to lift this up and carefully flip it over and just remove it like so. That's probably the best way to do it. Otherwise you're gonna have bits of bacon just going everywhere. And if you see any loose bits, just fix it up just so it's all nice and neat. Okay, so once your bacon's ready, we're going to place this into a preheated oven at about 200 degrees Celsius or say about 390 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 30 minutes. But between the 20 and 30 minutes, just keep an eye on it and take it out when it's ready. We want it to be on a nice, crispy type consistency because anything less, it just simply won't hold its shape. And there we have our bacon taco. Now, while I'll admit it's not gonna show up perfect, like I've seen ones on the internet where it just looks too perfect. The fact is with bacon, it shrinks, it moves. But the overall appearance is it's still in a taco shape and I've just topped it up with some scrambled eggs. So while well, yes, it doesn't look like a perfect taco shell, I challenge you to give it a go. Because no matter what shape you make bacon in, it's still going to taste simply delish. Okay, so I've got about six strips of bacon. So you're gonna place that on a fry pan. 
So once you've fried it up and it's nice and crispy, just take it off the heat and put it aside. And try your best not to have any. Well, of course, if you intend to have some, make sure you cook a bit extra for yourself. Now to start off with, I'm just boiling some macaroni pasta and just boil it to the directions of the packet until it's al dente. So while the pasta is boiling away into another pot on a medium to low heat, I'm going to add in four tablespoons or half a stick of butter. And we're just going to let that melt down. Okay, once the butter's melted, I'm going to add in four tablespoons of plain flour. So we're just going to mix it in and we're going to cook it over this medium heat for about two minutes. And in the two minutes, that's just going to cook out that flour flavor. Okay, now that we've cooked out our flour, I'm going to add in two and a half cups of milk. And just give that a good whisk through to combine it. And we're going to cook it over a medium heat for about 10 minutes until it starts to thicken up nicely. So while our mixture is thickening up, I've got a greased pie dish. Now you can make your own crust if you like. But I'm going to cheat and just use some puff pastry that I brought from the shop, so it works just as well. So just place that into the pie dish. Okay, so here I've got one egg yolk, and I also have some of our hot milk mixture. So I'm going to temper the egg, just place a little bit at a time, and whisk it at the same time. Just so you add, say about a cupful should be enough. But just keep on whisking it. This will just prevent the egg from scrambling. Okay, so as you can see, it is now thickened up nicely. So I'm just going to add a couple of teaspoons of mustard. And let's give that a good mix in. This adds a nice little bit of flavor to it. And lastly, I'm going to add in our cheese. Now you can use a mixture of cheeses. This one's like a Mexican type blend that I've picked up. But I'll leave it up to you on what type that you want to use, because it really comes down to personal taste. So we're just going to mix that in until it's completely melted. And now we're just going to pour in our tempered egg mixture. And give that a very good stir through until it's well combined. Okay, now we're just going to put everything together. So into a bowl I'm going to place in our cooked macaroni pasta, followed by our lovely cheese sauce. And assuming you didn't completely disregard my instructions earlier on, our cooked bacon. So just simply give it a good mix through until it's well combined. And once combined, just put it onto our pie base. Then give it a nice season with some salt and pepper. And now it's just a matter of covering up our pie with our bacon strips. So as you can see, I'm just doing a easy over and under. Just so we get a nice lattice type effect. Now I have the oven preheated as high as it will possibly go, which is about 280 degrees Celsius, or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're just going to place it in there for 15 minutes, give or take, until the bacon is cooked just how you like it. Now there we have a very, very delicious macaroni, cheese and bacon pie. Now I think it goes without saying that pretty much anything tastes better with bacon, and this is of no exception. But macaroni and cheese is already lovely and cheesy and creamy by itself. But there's only one way to make it better, and that's right, you guessed it, you add some bacon to it. And let's be completely honest with each other, just looking at it and knowing what's in it, you know deep down in your heart, this is going to taste simply delish. Now we're going to start off with some mashed potato. Now you can make it any way you like, you can steam it, you can boil it. Just cook it the way that's most convenient for you. So next I have a block of cheese here. Now again, you can use any type of cheese. That's what I love about this recipe. So with your favorite bit of cheese that I've just cut into a cube, we're going to cover that in our mashed potato. Now once covered, we're going to dip it in some breadcrumbs and just cover it the whole circumference of our mashed potato with breadcrumbs. And lastly, we're going to wrap around a piece of bacon. And just with a wooden skewer, just insert it through our cheese ball. And of course, whatever you do, don't soak these wooden skewers, because you usually do soak them when you're going to use it for cooking, but these are going to go in hot oil, so don't soak them, whatever you do. So finally, we're going to deep fry them. Now, if you're confident using a pot on a stove, go for it. I'm just using a mini deep fryer here. And I have it set for 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So carefully with your bowl, we're just going to place it into the deep fryer. And should only take 
about a minute to cook. The bacon will cook pretty much instantaneously. It's more so you can melt the cheese on the inside. So it shouldn't take long, just keep an eye on it. If you see cheese starting to drip out of it, well obviously pull it out straight away. But of course it just depends on the size of cheese that you've used or the size of the ball. So again, it should only take about a minute and it's done. Okay, so that's, that's done now. So just keep on doing them. Do like one or two at a time until they're all done. Now would you look at those scrumptious balls of goodness. Melted cheese in the middle and covered with mashed potato and bacon. Now bacon truly is one of those ingredients that just work with everything. So it's not overcooked, it's cooked just right. So when you take a bite into this, you get that ooey cheese coming out. Look at that. And bacon is... Mmm so crispy and you put all those ingredients together especially with this bacon oh bacon and these bacon and mashed potato balls taste simply delish g'day welcome to todd's kitchen i've been asked by a particular subscriber constantly to make this recipe so here it is it's so easy so simple so delicious it happens to be keto but who cares about that because it's just mouth watering so join me today as I make my version of a bacon bomb Okay, so this literally takes just a couple of minutes to prepare. It's incredibly simple and the taste profile is fantastic for such a simple preparation. So we're going to start off with our bacon. So we're using stringy bacon and we're going to just make a weave. And you want to try and make it a square version. So we're just going to leave a space in between each one. So if you've got longer ones, you use longer ones of course. And the longer and the larger, the better because it's more bacon more deliciousness. Okay, so basically we want to go over, under, and we can just move that over. So again, under, and over, and so forth. And we're just going to keep on doing this until we get out a lovely bacon weave. So we're just going to make it as tight as possible, just so you don't have any gaps in between. Just so you've got complete coverage and the meat won't come oozing out of our bacon weave. And it's as simple as that. It literally takes just a couple of minutes to make a bacon weave. So you can just make sure it's all nice and pretty. Okay, so it's that simple. We have our bacon weave. So there's no gaps, it's nice and tight. So you don't have to worry about the meat coming out. Okay, so for our next ingredient, we're going to use some ground pork mince. They don't really need to worry about exact measurements. You want to play it roughly by ear. So you can do like half a kilo or a pound. So you just want to stick it just in the middle just get as much as you can in, but not, don't overdo it, otherwise you won't be able to roll, uh, wrap it up properly. And push it down a bit, just get all the air out so you save space. And I'm just going to put a little indent in the middle. And I'm keeping this very simple. In the middle I'm just going to add some cheese. Up to you what type of cheese you like. Mozzarella, tasty cheese, just whatever you prefer. It's very simple. But who doesn't love melted cheese? Now after this you can add any type of vegetables or seasoning that you like. It's really very versatile. But because this is a bacon explosion, I just want to keep that lovely pork taste. The minced pork and the bacon. So I'm just going to season it lightly, just with some salt and a little bit of pepper. Not too much because I don't want to overshadow that flavour. So at this point it's really incredibly simple. We're using our foil that we've got underneath our bacon. We're just going to slowly roll this up without rolling the foil inside, of course. So we're going to let the foil do the work for us till we have a lovely round log of bacon. So push as hard as you can or relatively firmly just so it's one thick log. And don't be afraid to open it just again, just to be on the safe side. And as you can see, it is nice and round and compact. And just moving the edges like so. So because we're keeping it in the foil, we don't need toothpicks or anything like that. As long as it's nice and compacted, the bacon will actually stick to the meat pretty well. Okay, so once it's pushed down like that, just simply 
roll it up into our foil, just pat it down and firm down the sides. And that's it, it's done and ready for the oven. Okay, so we're going to place it into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. And at 45 minutes, we're going to place a digital thermometer inside of our bacon bomb. And as long as it's above 71 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Fahrenheit, you know it's ready. Okay, so I know you'll want to have it straight away. I recommend that you don't. What you're going to do is let it sit there for half an hour because if you cut it up straight away, all the juices are just going to run out and that's where half the flavor is. So let it rest for a good half an hour and it's ready to cut up and serve. And trust me, just waiting that extra half an hour makes a huge difference in the taste. As you can see, I've just placed it into the oven on a high temperature, say about 230 degrees Celsius, and that'll just help cook the outside of the bacon. So it's completely optional, but it just really adds a nice extra texture. And well, who doesn't love bacon? Well done. And the best thing about cooking it on the outside afterwards, because it only takes a couple of minutes, you can choose exactly how you want your bacon. And look at that just sizzling away in the oven. So again, this is completely optional, but I love to do it because it just adds that extra bit of color and definitely the taste to our bacon. Okay, so all we have to do is just cut into our bacon bomb. Oh, look at that. It smells delicious. And come on, it's bacon. Of course it is. You have this fantastic bacon wrapped around pork with a center of cheese. So you can cut up any size that you like. Or you can just take a little bit like this and oh man that's good oh that is really really good bacon pork and cheese wrapped into a lovely little round log like this so it certainly is incredibly delicious and again you can cook the bacon as much as you like you can have a far crispy if you like that's what's best by just quickly cooking it on the outside later because you can really choose how crispy you go so you can have it almost crispy where it's as you can see, it's just starting to break apart, or you can have a black. It's incredibly simple, literally takes just a couple of minutes to put together, but the best part is it tastes simply delish. <laughs> <laughs>